Welcome to AMM 101, Chapter 2, Textile Design and Product Development. So a couple of uh, buzzwords or uh, basic vocabulary that your uh, textbook calls buzzwords. Textile design, uh, when we talk about product development in this chapter, we focus on textiles and careers in actual textiles. So textile design is the process of creating, um, designing patterns, motifs, uh, repeated patterns, uh, surface designs as well for all types of uh, fabrics, so either knitted, woven, or uh, printed. Colorways are different color versions, color, color palette, or specific uh, uh, options in terms of colors, so you can have the same print but in different colorways, it just comes in different color versions. Uh, same print in just a different uh, color variation. Finishing is enhancing the appearance um, for wear, performance, we'll talk about that, and finishes as well, mechanical, chemical, or combination. You can actually make finishes on fabrication that are uh, with chemicals, uh, which we're kind of trying to stray, stay away from. A lot of people don't like that. Uh, not all of them have been tested for carcinogens, obviously. Uh, mechanical with the actual machines or a combination of both. Um, typically, finishes are to you know uh, prepare the fabric for wear or for uh, further use and it gives special characteristics to the fabrications. So just so you understand how these careers work, you need to understand the stages of uh, textiles into the fashion business. So you have to grow and produce fibers. Then you take those little fibers, um, and if it's plant fibers, you grow them. If it's uh, synthetic fibers, you produce them in a lab. So they're natural, or you can also get them from an animal, so hair from an animal. So uh, when you get wool from sheep, for example. Um, so if it's from a plant or an animal, we call those natural fibers. And if you produce them through chemicals and through machinery, you call them synthetic or man-made fibers. Okay. Then you take those fibers, which are like hair-like structures, and you produce yarn. So it gets spun in many different ways, and that's where um, the textile classes will really help you. In our case, AMM 160, AMM 260, and 360. But basically, you'll see how the fibers are turned into yarns, uh, different spinning processes to make uh, take those yarns, and then uh, you design fabrication, so fabrics. And that's where you knit or sew them. So you design prints, you design finish, you know, you design uh, different uh, surface textures, and that's how it's going to dictate how it's going to be knitted or woven, for example. So then you produce the fabrics, you print and finish them, uh, then you take, you cut and you sew, and you market and sell it, and then cleaning and care of them matters. That's why uh, the finishes matter, um, because because of certain finishes, sometimes you can't iron something, or it has to be dry clean only. Uh, not so much because of the fibers, but because of the chemical finish uh, imposed on them. So uh, that will actually dictate how you have supposed to take care of them as a consumer. So a little introduction to the textile uh, overview, basically. Um, so textiles is a broad field, so it's not just apparel, just so you understand. And there's different parts in apparel as well. Um, so this is just an overview of the uh, stages of manufacturing. So again, you start off with a fiber, basic unit, which all textiles are made, so hair-like structures, just how you see here. Then it's, it's turned into, put into a cone, uh, spun into yarn, so it's continuous strand made up of fibers. Now some of these fibers are long, uh, we call those filament fibers, and some of those fibers are really short, really tiny. Those are called cotton, uh, cotton, sorry, cotton's an example. Those are called staple fibers. So we use to knit or weave those fabrics. So we uh, take these fibers, spin them into yarn, we take this yarn, and then we put it into fabric. So fabric is a cloth, uh, and you can either interlace, interloop the yarns, or you can also bind the fibers in webs, and we call those non-woven fabrics. Then we dye or print. Uh, dyeing is adding color to textile materials. Okay, and printing is applying dye, pigment, or other chemicals to produce a design on the actual fa fabric. Finishing is typically the last step, although it does depend, but typically it is the last step in when you're manufacturing fabric, and that's uh, to give it a specific function or aesthetic. So common finishes are uh, wrinkle resistance. So there's a chemical put in there so it doesn't wrinkle, prevents the fabric from wrinkling. Um, so you don't have to iron it, so those iron-free shirts would be a chemical finishing. Uh, children's pajamas are required to have a flame retardant, so that's a chemical finish as well, put on the fabric so that 
if you sell any kids pajamas you are required by law to uh, make sure that that fabric has flame retardant if it does not you're not legally allowed to market that as pajamas as sleepwear okay so it's just so you know so the textile performance does result from the choices you make in each stage and like I mentioned it's not just apparel apparel is a big one obviously but also household textiles and institutional textiles so table linens draperies um, so textiles for interiors so for windows upholstered furniture carpets uh, fabric wallpaper for example technical textiles like packaging material protective clothing um, medical a lot in the medical field automotive as well outdoor um, these are all uh, major end uses for fabrics so in terms of what fabric to select to make depends on the performance the use the care and the maintenance cost and availability so all that uh, has it depends on what you need it for also environmental concerns um, also if you want to make sure it's made in the USA or at least materials made in the USA or if it's handmade for example then that might limit the choices you have care maintenance is also um, an important factor uh, and you need to make sure that you note uh, care labels are required by law by the FTC the Federal Trade Commission so you're supposed to, as a manufacturer put uh, how you're supposed to take care of the apparel items how you're supposed to wash them so in terms of performance there are three main properties when you take the textile courses you'll go into much more detail but durability comfort and aesthetics and this just gives you an idea of each uh, area so aesthetics is obviously what you see so physical appearance the drape how it hangs on the body, uh, the wrinkle and crush resistance, dimensional stability, pilling, you know, those little balls that form after washing a couple of times, color fastness, does the, the dye uh, come off the uh, fabric when you wash it, snagging, shape retention. Uh, comfort is moisture management, stretch and recovery, thermal insulation, static buildup, uh, tech, uh, tactile properties, skin irritants and allergens. That's where we're kind of pushing more towards less chemicals but also does it stretch out does it go back uh, does it keep its hold its shape um, how does it feel when you sweat in it does it maintain body heat and durability the strength abrasion resistance the weathering etc so careers in textile design so fashion director um, they're responsible for determining trends colors and textures for piece goods they really do look at the overall down the road uh, forecasting um, and they determine overall what you're going to be going ahead with in terms of actual fabrications, what main colors you need to use, and what textures should be used. So that's basically the top rung when it comes to uh, jobs. You want to be the textile uh, director, creative director. Uh, some of them are called creative director. Um, but you have to work your way up. So a typical job that you want to get into is textile designing. And this is where you really are responsible for creating the images, the patterns, the textures, the weaves, and the knits of the fabric. Um, in this part of the industry, we call them croquis for rendering little miniature uh, views of the textile pattern. In product development, when it comes to sketching, croquis are a different thing. Uh, but for textiles, it's, it's just basically a thumbnail. In terms of uh, fashion-related industries, uh, all sorts of industries are available to you because we work with knitted and woven fabrics. You can do, like I said, home furnishings, rugs, carpets, wallpapers, flooring, tiles, etc. So those skills can be transferred to other areas as well. Uh, many uh, use aid, so you do um, sometimes hire services uh, from outdoor, from outside companies, uh, print services to, that sell art, uh, computer-aided design. Uh, art uh, CADs, so CAD stands for Computer Aided Design, so you can actually purchase CADs where the textile prints are decided for you. So as a textile designer, you might be running short on time, so you can actually buy some of the actual uh, CADs. Some people freelance and they can come up with some really good designs. Uh, manufacturers will create a strike off, so it's a sample, a fabric sample to verify the color, pattern texture before production. So that strike off needs to have uh, approval before you go into production. That's very important. Okay. Uh, textile colorist is another job, uh, basically choosing color combinations. So they're the ones that maybe the main designer creates the actual design on the print, but the textile colorist decides the color combos. Um, and different colorways. Um, there are some challenges. Sometimes interpreted trends de uh, design designated by the fashion director uh, may not be seen eye to eye with the colorist or with the designer because now you're dealing with multiple people. 
Um, sometimes it's hard to convert words of fashion of the fashion director, the idea of them, to images. Sometimes they're not as specific as they should be. And it makes it hard for you to create that uh, or bring that. And sometimes they're like, that's not what I want. And you're like, well, what do you, you're not t giving me good direction. So sometimes it can get a little bit difficult. Definitely, you need to be aware of technical requirements, uh, certain fabrications, and definitely working against the clock. So it's a lot of quick deadlines. So I need to strike off by the end of the day. I need this. I need that. It need, it's very quick. So you don't have time to sit there and really mull it over. You have to produce quite a bit in a very short period of time. Um, the textile technician, if there is one, sometimes they have one person doing multiple jobs. But if there is a textile technician, the technician actually is kind of the supervisor and um, mostly in production. So they look at the production facilities, making sure that um, everything's being produced and they're meeting their deadlines. Um, definitely understanding uh, changing technologies. When you get new machinery, new equipment, you have to be trained and it eats up into your daily schedule and it's hard. So keeping up with that is a challenge. Deadlines are always a challenge. Anytime you're in production in anything, production is always deadline challenge. And communicating so you have to be able to speak up and uh, problem solve uh, also in other divisions uh, it helps when everybody communicates well and you can problem solve together there are also textile engineers they determine how designs are applied to the fabric and they do tend to work with overseas because these are more complex designs complex fabrics so they typically are done uh, in China and other places they're overseas um, so uh, they really work. It's really heavy on outsourcing. So if you're an American company, you're usually outsourcing overseas. Uh, definitely, you have to have uh, part of the work completed by an outside manufacturer, typically, uh, in another country. So communication, knowing the language, understanding how to troubleshoot is, is crucial. But they, they typically design, they're the engineer and design how the mo those patterns and the way that they're going to be made, particular in it, um, you're going to engineer it, basically, and how it's going to be done. Uh, your book goes into a resource room, dict uh, director, reference, librarian. I'm not going to go into it just because I have not seen any of our students go into that, but that's something that you can do. Mainly looking at resources would be your specialty there. An account executive, you sell to textile manufacturers and manage accounts, kind of like a sales rep in a way. Uh, can be paid in salary commission, usually a combination. Sometimes you get quotas. Uh, usually a combination is the most common. Definitely need to understand accounting and marketing, great sales skills. Uh, there can be a really nice uh, bonuses when you hit the, the sales, uh, but you're basically a sales rep. Uh, keep that in mind and just focusing on, on fabrications. Uh, an example of a company that employs a lot of textile creative directors and product developers, Cotton Inc. Cotton Inc. is a perfect example, uh, and they have great websites, so I definitely recommend you go to their website on Cotton Inc. Uh, it's a great information center for, uh, now they focus on cotton and cotton blend, uh, fibers and textiles, obviously. Um, but they're great because it shows you, they even have a great little video and uh, encyclopedia uh, online, which is great. Um, but again, their focus is on cotton and it's good for you to know both uh, natural, you know, cotton as well as wool and uh, polyester and all the synthetics as well. But they focus on cotton and cotton blend, but they're great at giving you the information on fabrication, color, on trend, inf uh, trend information, who's producing what, a great resource library uh, there for you, um, different products that are made out of cotton, uh, and which designers, retailers are really pushing the use of it. So that's great. They work closely with the Cotton Council International. Um, they really work on research and promoting cotton and cotton products. I'm sure you've seen their commercials um, uh, on broadcast media. They offer technical services as well as fiber processing, development, dyeing, finishing, uh, quality management assistance, you know how to get your cotton products into good pro uh, good quality. Um, they are located in North Carolina, that's their headquarters, their global headquarters, so for all the world it's North Carolina, and North Carolina is a big area for actual textiles, so um, Cotton Inc. would be a good place to, to look at if you're interested, but any of the main fabric uh, mills, like a uh, big one here in uh, downtown LA, Antex Knitting Mills, now they focus on knits, but they're great. They have really good quality. They're kind of expensive fabrics, but they're great quality on fabrication. So if you're interested in any of these jobs, what I recommend is, you know, start off with Cotton Inc., um, but definitely go to some of the, look up uh, some, just go to like a, a Joann's, look up, go to Michael Levine's, look up some of the textile producers and go to their websites and check them out and uh, see what information you get. There's some good resources also in your textbook, but um, you can definitely look those up.
okay? Uh, not a lot of jobs either, uh, but I mean, there's quite a bit, but it's just not, not as much as uh, you would like in terms of uh, designing and buying. There's definitely less jobs there in that regard, but, um, uh, and definitely some relocating oftentimes is required for those, okay? So hope this helped, and um, uh, that's it for Chapter 2. Thanks for listening.